So getting on to the program uh, where we all take some time here today to thank Todd for his uh, remarkable leadership this past year. Um, and first, before we do that, I'd like to welcome Tom Bentley to the stage uh, who has some remarks. There was a rumor that uh, after my retirement, those years, I've gotten quite shy in front of a microphone. Well, probably not. Um, so I do have a present to bestow, bestow upon Todd in a couple minutes. Just a couple things to share with you. I was the first one to the bar, um, and I thought for a past president, father of the retiring president, that that was appropriate. So he made me the first cocktail, and um, I told Todd that, and Todd rolled his eyes back and said, why doesn't that surprise me? So, um, that's pretty cute, Todd. Um, I did want to say uh, that uh, Todd is the distinction of becoming now my, my number one son. And of course, since I have two daughters and Todd, he's been my number one son since he was 10 years old. But don't let that take the glow off of the award, of the recognition. So uh, with that, I just wanted to tell you uh, that um, Gerda, if you saw Gerda here when he was here in late April, John Gerda, the most uh, su biggest surprise to me is he stood here before he started, pointed to me over there, and he said, I was a speaker under Tom Bentley's presidency. Now I'm a speaker under Todd Bentley's presidency. How quickly it seemed the years go by and how quickly we age. And indeed we do. They fly by and they don't stop and wait for anybody. I think the next stop in 25 years for me will be the great Rotary Club up in the sky, where I think the four-way test is maybe a little tougher than this one. But <laughs> we'll see. Or there's rumors it's a 10-way test. It's called the Ten Commandments, I believe. But um, I'm much looking forward to that. And um, maybe one of Todd's three kids will be a Rotary president someday and be standing up here. It would be awesome. We'd probably be the only club and family in the nation to have three successive presidents um, in the club in the same family. Um, but I do have a presentation for Todd. Um, and I can't be more proud of my son. Uh, he's just done a wonderful job as a father, a family member, and uh, I couldn't be, be prouder of him. So if Todd would come up here for one second. Um, on your tables, uh, General Douglas MacArthur, who is featured downstairs everywhere, um, my, my grandfather gave to my father, my father gave to me, and I'm now giving to Todd this prayer, a father's prayer, about what would make a, a, a wonderful son. And just for all of you, I would say that it doesn't need to be a son. It can be a wonderful daughter, a wonderful family member, anybody you've looked up to. It's very good to look at these words uh, by, by a very famous man. And I think you can reflect on somebody in your church, your family, a leader of your organization. And these are very meaningful words. And Todd, we can never fulfill all of these. None of us can. But you've come as close as a son can. So I'm going to prevent this to you. And thank you for being a great son. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So I have a few short prepared remarks uh, for, for Todd. Um, as I came in today, um, Karen and I uh, happened to meet one another at the bar, and Karen asked if, uh, if I had got myself a cocktail prior to me coming up uh, to become the incoming president. And I said, no, it was virtual. And I wasn't drinking at home alone in front of my computer. Um, however, it's a great idea <laughs> to, to help you get up on stage and speak to everyone. So highly recommended uh, for, for, your, <laughs> for your upcoming presidency. Um, I have been told by a few past presidents um, that this event has long since lost its tradition of being a roast. So I look to drum up some dirt on Todd in an effort to resurrect that age-old tradition. Um, but it, of course, as many people know, quickly became apparent to me that it'd be much easier uh, to engage in some tomfoolery than some toddfoolery. Given the vast oral history passed down to me from elder members of our club, um, which is 
particularly interesting because what happens in Vegas is supposed to stay in Vegas, right, Tom? <laughs> so let's have some fun. Aaron, um, if you can cue the uh, projector for it. No, kidding. Aaron's like, what? <laughs> um, all kidding aside, um, of course, uh, as most people know, I don't really have a sense of humor. So I'd instead like to take some time uh, to elaborate on the passing of generations in our club. Uh, while I was not a member when all of the tomfoolery was happening, um, I have had the privilege of seeing our club identify and support some amazing projects in and around our community, all the while becoming more diverse and inclusive. The generations of our members have helped see our club become stronger and more vibrant. Two weeks ago, Todd was uh, able to chair an event at the Grumman Museum to celebrate our long-standing club members. Charlie James, again, uh, having been a member for 64 years, Eckert Groman, 54 years, Doug McNeil, 50 years, John Rosser, 49 years. I mean, these are amazing statistics. Um, and of course, our membership continues to change. Uh, it wasn't until the early 90s that the names of women began to appear in our board of directors list, uh, eventually resulting in the names of our first female president, Sister Camille, in 1993. Our first woman person of color, President Jackie Heard Barber, uh, in 2009. Back-to-back uh, -back women presidents, Nancy Sennett and Joanne Anton in 2016 and 2017. Uh, and shortly, we'll welcome another uh, remarkable and deeply dedicated woman of action as club president. And now, Todd, with your year coming to a close, we've seen our club lead with a second-generation president. Of course, you all know that Todd's father, Tom, served as club president in 1998 and 1999. And Tom, again, as you're well aware, uh, there's no dirt on your son. In fact, he's so morally grounded that uh, the thought of roasting him never even really crossed my mind. Although there were some members of our club who offered to dig up that dirt. <laughs> Those members will remain nameless. Um, so at the close of your year, it took some time to reflect on this being a year of transition. A transition from two years of surviving during the pandemic as a club to really a year of thriving. In the last year under your leadership, Todd, we leveraged the resources of the club and our members and the RC RCM Community Trust. We awarded 21 scholarships, raising over $75,000 through the Scholarship Golf Classic, increasing the value of our scholarship endowments by 50% to just over $1 million. That in and of itself deserves a round of applause. <laughs> our scholarship program now boasts 32 graduates who are making a difference across our community. Uh, you led the fundraising and project oversight to construct the $200,000 water system for a regional hospital in Escondida, Guatemala. This was a co cooperative effort with Engineers Without Borders. We also supported EWB chapters at Marquette, MSOE, and UWM. We raised over $65,000 to support an Ethiopian student and Rotaract member who is studying nursing at Alverno College. Her family was caught in the hostilities on the ground in Ethiopia, which prevented her uh, from returning and forced her family to suspend her support. We helped establish partnerships with the city's premier leadership development programs, Forward 48, and the African American Leadership Alliance of Milwaukee. Milwaukee. we celebrated the Milwaukee opening of the Milwaukee Urban Stables with the Mountain Patrol moving in and the Veterans Therapy Programming getting off to a strong start. We contributed $61,000 to the Rotary International Foundation. 24,000 for polio, 36,500 for the annual fund, and $7,000 for global grants. You helped us work through the, with the Milwaukee Women's, uh, Muslim Women's Coalition to pr purchase and deliver thousands of articles of clothing and basic supplies to the Afghan refugees at Fort McCoy. We deepened our connections to the Johnson Park community and explored an innovative approach to developing infill housing. You helped us complete our pledge of $50,000 to create the Rotary Community Room at the Central Library. 
Our club members read Isabel Wilkerson's Cast in Some of Us by Heather McGee to help remind ourselves how systemic racism has, has and continues to affect our community. We committed $50,000 to a major campus renovation at the Marcus Center for the Performing Arts. You helped us support Hike Milwaukee, offering a series through the Milwaukee Rotary Centennial Arboretum, an increasingly popular destination throughout the pandemic. Club members also helped to protect hundreds of trees in the Rotary Centennial Arboretum. We supported summer employment for high school students at the River Revitalization Foundation. We helped clean up the Milwaukee River, rang bells for the Salvation Army and packed food at Feeding America. We, clean, we encouraged volunteering with the McKee Christmas Club, and we were able to help fund sailing lessons for disabled veterans and explore options for placing a gold star monument on this property. And we also have continued under your leadership to honor our speakers with the donation to the YWCA, whose mission is the elimination of racism and the empowerment of women. Yes, our club has changed, but Rotary, Rotary's value, in my opinion, is one of the last greatest keepers of impartial light, a light which allows our members to shine into a community that we all value and seek to improve. We are younger and more diverse than we've ever been. And I would say that if there's one characteristic that, would, that I would use to describe Todd, it's humility. So I'm sure he'll be fine if I take just a few moments to recognize a few people other than Todd. Because as I well know, the Rotary president does not carry this light alone. We are truly blessed to have this opportunity, a club built for us by members past over the last 110 years. So there are many people to thank, but I know we usually only have class participation at our holiday event, but if you're able to stand when I call on you, please do so and be recognized. If you've been a member of our club for more than 20 years, please stand. If you've been a member of our club for less than a year, please stand. New members, this is the heart of Rotary, right? This is the excited, this is the secret sauce. Thank you for being here. If you're a guest, please stand. We all know that guests make the best uh, potential Rotarians. <laughs> um, Mary McCormick, who's made our club her life for the last 20 years. Thank you. Melissa Aaron, good nature. Kind spirits make uh, every Tuesday a success. If you're currently a board member or a past board member, please stand. If you're on a committee, please stand. If you joined our club to selfishly perpetuate your brand and land your next big business deal, Please stand. <laughs> See, Rotarians are all here for the right reasons. If you've been a member for more than a year, please stand. That should be everyone. So while you're all here standing with me, let's give Todd an ovation for his clear leadership and dedication to our club. Cheers. Todd. As is tradition, we'll pass the gavel that Todd used in person all year. Thank you, Darren. Um, it, it has been an honor to play a small part in all the great things this club does. And I truly feel, you know, as Darren reads off those, um, you know, everything this club has been able to do over the last year, truly feel like the batter who gets up to the plate with the bases already loaded and gets hit by a pitch to walk the winning, winning run home. I mean, it truly is a, a club of 
you know, the members and it's been, it's been an experience and it's been incredible. I always knew that this club does incredible and transformative things for the community, but one of the things I didn't appreciate until this year was the extent and the breadth of what this club does. One of the things you get to do when you're president is you get to be invited to all of the committee meetings, not just one or two of them. And you get to have conversations with Protarians throughout the years. And one of the things that I just, I can't stress enough to everybody is this club does so much more and makes so much more of an impact than what you hear from the podium or what we all read about in the newsletters. You know, as a club, we don't talk much about what we do and we don't talk about all the things we've done. I think it almost um, you know, works against us in certain instances, but when there's a need, when there's an opportunity, Rotarians have a way of just putting their head down and getting things done, and it truly, it's been remarkable. I've got two big takeaways over the last 12 months. The first one is truly the strength of this club. Darren talked a little bit about it. We came out of a pandemic, which was truly one of the toughest um, challenges a club, an organization like ours could face. I mean, it limited our ability to get together and connect and make a difference. And if you think that's important to Rotary, I mean, it's our tagline. You know, it's what we do. You know, the pandemic limited our ability to, to get together, our ability to meet. It disrupted the lives of our members. You know, we had members who weren't allowed to come to a meeting with more than three or four people in a room. And it made many of our key initiatives impossible to actually execute. And not only are we still here today, but I believe we are as strong of a club as ever. And I think, um, you know, we owe a debt of gratitude to really the great decisions that were made early on in the pandemic by both Steve and Darren. There were so many conversations and so much work that went into what do we need to do as a club in this setting to be able to continue on and keep some continuity when everything around us was changing. Uh, we also owe a huge debt of gratitude to Mary, thank you for all you do, to Melissa and to Aaron for helping us continue on through all of that. <laughs> the other thing that gives our club strength is the foundation that has been laid over many years, which really brings me to my second big takeaway, which this club is only as strong as our members and the passion and the dedication of our membership. It is incredible. Our club strength lies in its people. You know, the people who've come before us, the people who are here now, and the entire community, the entire club owes a debt of gratitude for our membership, you know, everything you guys do, you know, the support for me, the support for Melissa, Aaron, Mary, and really the support for everybody in the community. So really as my last official act, I just want a heartfelt thank you to everybody in this room for all you do, not just to support me, not just to support the Rotary staff, but to support everybody. Not just in Milwaukee, I mean, we're doing work in Guatemala, we're contributing funds to you know, projects in, in Africa. I mean, it's, it, it really is incredible. So with that, it is truly an honor to introduce all of you to our 2022-2023 Rotary President, Karen Hung, CEO and founder of Silver Rock Consulting. Karen has been at the firm she's founded for over eight years and has had multiple global leadership roles with a multitude of Fortune 500 companies, including GE, Land's End, MetLife, Citigroup, among others. She serves on multiple for-profit and non-profit boards, and she is a mother, a wife, and almost as importantly, she's a Rotarian. So I've had the privilege of working beside Karen for the past couple of years, and I can assure you this club could not be in better hands moving forward. So with that, Karen, please come up. <laughs> so I would like to present Karen with her 2022-2023 Official gavel. Thank you, Todd. Thank you.
Wow. I'm just drinking all of you in. My heart is full. Dear Rotarians, I'm so honored to be your next president. I'm getting a little flimped up here. <laughs> what a privilege to, to be able to serve in this capacity and to be a Rotary Club of Milwaukee steward alongside of you. And I also want to join in thanking Todd for his leadership, as well as all the past presidents for their lineage. So if you are a past president, as well as with Todd, would you all please stand? Thank you. We stand on all your shoulders, and I'm delighted to continue forward with, along with all of us in this room and online. Our specific club's theme is about connecting. And as I think about the next Rotary year, I have one central thought and request of all of you, which is to further connect by engaging. Many of you know, and some of you participated in some listening sessions over the last several months. And the impetus behind the listening sessions was to touch Rotarians and hear what was on your hearts and minds. And there are synthesized report outs that we've shared with the board, the membership engagement committee, and we'll be, uh, I'll be sharing some of these further with other committees over the next few months. But I thought it was really important for all of you to know what we said. So I'm going to share three big themes from that report with you today. So this is us talking about us. First, it's about our impact through engaging. Our members like connecting with people and ideas with a shared commitment for enduring impact. Connecting with people and ideas with a shared commitment for enduring impact. And one great quote that came out of one of the sessions was, when Rotary's involved, we can change the dialogue. So that means we're making a difference when we're engaged. And you've already heard a number of the examples today. And so I will also share some of these examples in the list so that we can take it all in. Our decade-plus scholarship program, Feeding America, the Milwaukee Rotary Centennial Arboretum, Johnson Park, Live at the Lakefront, Milwaukee Stables, and of course, as already mentioned, our more recent work with the Afghanistan refugees and Ukrainian humanitarian efforts. So that's impact through engaging. Second, relationships through engaging. Our members said, we and others in the community have an immediate high level of trust when we know someone's a Rotarian. How many times does that happen to you? Right, you walk in, you see a lot of nods around the room. You walk in, and people's like, you're a Rotarian? And there, immediately, there's a strong filter. And in one of the sessions, one of the participants said, quote, Rotary brings an instant trust and credibility like a good housekeeping seal of approval, end quote. So many said they've joined Rotary to build relationships, to develop networks, and to cultivate lifelong friendships. And some of these are outside of your normal circles. So relationships and trust, as we know, happen through engaging and engagement over time. Third, learning through engaging. Our members love to learn. And Rotarians continue to have a great curiosity to learn from a wide range of topics and experiences. Our program committee, who, who here is from the program committee? All right, raise them high, be loud and proud. All right, so big thanks to our program committee. We always get high praise and high marks for consistently for the speakers who we bring in. And our members also learn through various opportunities and experiences by participating in committees. Um, Darren has already asked the committee members to stand, so I won't do that. But certainly a very vital part of our club. And all these opportunities of learning and leadership come through engaging, from showing up every Tuesday to engaging in the inner workings of our club where the real magic happens. 
So the three themes, impact, leader relationship, and learning all through engaging are just so strong and continue to be a strength of our clubs and something that we should continue to do. I want you all to take a moment and pause and think of your favorite Rotary moment. You have it? Yes? What were you doing? Who were you with? Keep that memory. Because that moment happened because you were engaged. At the heart of all what I heard is that we want to make a difference and to be part of something bigger than ourselves. And so to continue to enhance those aspirations, to elevate our club into another level, and to evolve who we are as individuals, I do ask you to find ways to more deeply engage and connect with our club. Some ideas for you to consider if you're not on a committee, which actually many of you are, we appreciate that. Find one that's interesting where you can contribute and learn. If you don't regularly attend our weekly meetings, try to make a point of coming more often. If you're not frequently, if you haven't frequently participated in some of our community programs, Tom highlighted a few, sign up, show up, and bring others along with for fun and for an extra pair of hands. And then stay for 20 years. And for certain, as it's been mentioned many times, and Maggie brought it up today, if you meet someone who's interesting, who's not in rot Rotary, invite them to a Rotary event and to consider our membership. 51 new members. It's a lifeblood. It's paramount for us to continue to recruit amazing leaders from all walks to our club to continue our momentum. In fact, we look at Todd and all of us. Maybe let's aim to exceed that, to expect that number this next year. Now, as far as the future vision for our club in this new year, we are innovating and going to pilot some opportunities for Rotarians to get to know Rotarians better. And in fact, the Membership Engagement Committee has already started brainstorming that. And that's based on what we heard in the listening sessions. Uh, we said, wow, it's great to hear the speakers, but we want to also learn to get to know ourselves a little bit as well. I also want to work with our new board to think about what we as a club may want to accomplish in the next three years that we may need to start this year. Todd and Darren have both mentioned the legacy of the things that we continue to build upon each other. And so it's time for us to think about laying that groundwork for our future as well. As a membership organization, you've heard this many times, we're only as good as our members. So I do ask you to increase your individual engagement in meaningful ways. Why? Because engagement is core to personal and club vitality. It's good for you, and it's good for all of us. So here's to our next level of connecting by engaging with our Rotary Club of Milwaukee in the year ahead. I'm excited to start this journey with you today. Thank you. And with that, our meeting is adjourned. <laughs>